Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. I'm in the lab, my favourite place since I started my PhD. Do you fancy doing a PhD? Of course you do, that's why you're watching this video. A PhD is an amazing experience and it can lead to an incredible career. But how do you maximise your chances of getting a PhD position? I've interviewed hundreds of PhD candidates and graduated more than 30. In this video, I am going to use my 25 years of experience to share with you my five top tips so that you can maximise your chance of being the successful candidate at a PhD interview. So, if that sounds good, get yourself a drink. I'm not allowed to have a drink because I'm in the laboratory. And let's make a start. The first top tip is funding. Funding is super important. No funding, no PhD. It's as simple as that. So therefore, there's got to be funding for you to do a PhD. Where does that funding come from? Well, if you've got very rich parents, or you have a lot of money, you can fund yourself, and that puts you in pole position. If you're lucky enough to have your own funding, you can find a supervisor that works in an area that interests you and write to that supervisor by email. In the email, say why you're interested in doing a PhD and, most importantly, say that you have the funding available. If you don't say that you've got the funding available, I almost guarantee that the email will go straight into the bin. So you can write to the PhD supervisor directly and say, this is me, this is what I'm interested in, it seems to match your interests and I've got funding and you should be good to go. That leaves a situation where you don't have rich parents or you don't have a lot of money, you still need to find funding for your PhD. Someone's got to fund it, so where is it coming from? Lots of countries have scholarship schemes for their best performing students. So, if you're a top student in your particular country, have a look and see if your government has a funding scheme. Apply for it. Many times you have to find a PhD supervisor first, but if you don't, apply, get the funding, and then see if you can find a PhD supervisor, exactly the same way as if your family was funding you. If you apply and you need a PhD supervisor to say they'll take you, write to some supervisors and say, look, I'm thinking of applying for this scholarship, I really need your support, will you support me in applying and do it together? Do not send a million emails to different supervisors, all the same, one generic email saying, I really want to work with you, blah, 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 blah. You need to focus your email on that supervisor's particular research. Read their website, look at their papers, write an email targeted to them. Say, hello sir, I've noticed that you do a lot of nanoparticle delivery, I'm really interested in that, can I work with you? Don't send something generic, focus it on their research and you're much more likely to get a response. The last type of funding is where the supervisor already has the funding in place. So, go to a university's website that you like Look at the staff, see what funding opportunities are available, and then again, either write to the supervisor directly and see what the project is about, or just apply. You've got nothing to lose by applying. You can look at the university's website, find a phd.com, university's social media. There's a whole range of places that you might be able to find a PhD place. One really important thing, though, is if the supervisor has got funding for a PhD project, they're going to have done that by writing to a funder with a specific project. So they're going to have said, nah, I want to use these nanoparticles to deliver this drug to treat this type of tumour, for instance. You can't then write to that supervisor and say, ah, oh, see, so you've got a funded place available, I'm really interested in that, but my interest is more in probiotics or 3D printing, so can I do that instead? The supervisor has got the project funded by a funder and it's that project which must run. So you need to be pretty rigid and say, I want to do that particular project because I know that's what you've got funded. So I suppose the upshot there is, if you've got your own funding, scholarship or family, you've got a lot more flexibility in what project you might do, 
before applying for a specific project that a supervisor has got funded, you have to do that exact project. Okay? Which leads us on to number two. The second tip is topic. What topic is the PhD going to be about? Since the day you were born, you might have wanted to do a PhD in a very specific area. Say you want to deliver a very particular type of drug to a very particular type of tumour. That's great if you've got your own funding from either your parents or from a local scholarship, as I've just mentioned. You're in control of what type of project that you do. You've just got to find the right type of supervisor. If, on the other hand, the much more likely situation that you apply for a funded PhD, the supervisor has written the project and the project is very specific. So you've got to be okay with that. I've met lots of students over the years that haven't applied for particular PhD programs because they think the topic is either boring or outside of their field of interest, won't lead to a good career or whatever. I always say to people, just apply. A PhD is going to be three years of your life and I fully accept that if it's something that doesn't interest you at all, okay, don't apply for it. But within a particular field, let's say pharmaceutics, because that's the one that I'm in, you could probably do almost any PhD and ultimately you're going to grow into it. You're going to become the main person in that PhD because you're doing it every hour of every day for three years. And I guarantee that by the end of it, you will enjoy it. You may think the project sounds super boring at the start, but you will own it by the end. You just have to trust me on that. When I did my PhD, it was in calorimetry, which still takes me a long time to say. And I thought, wow, what a boring technique. But it's okay, it's a PhD place. I want to do a PhD. I'll crack on with it for three years and then go and do something else. And what do I do now? I run a research group that has the largest center for analytical cal calorimetry in the world because it turned out to be a really good technique and I loved doing my PhD. So top tip number two is don't be too worried about the topic of your PhD, just apply. You only have to make a decision about whether to take it once it's been offered, okay? The third top tip is institution. I work for UCL and we rank seventh in the world in terms of universities across all subjects and fourth in the world for pharmacy and pharmacology. Pretty good, I think you'll agree. We therefore attract an amazing range of students from all over the world. And one of the best things about my job is coming in and working with some of these incredible young minds. So clearly you want to look at the institution and apply for a PhD in the best institution that you can. If you're funding your own projects, as I've said already, you're in pole position. You can choose a top university, find an academic that works in an area that you like and write to them directly. But don't be hung up about the institution. There are thousands of universities in the world and most of them are really great. Also, big institutions can have a range of supervisors. Some can be fantastic, some might be less good. And there are gonna be other universities maybe that you're not so keen on that have some fantastic supervisors and ultimately it's about the supervisor student relationship isn't it so don't be hung up about the quality of the institution apply for everything see if you get offers and once you get an offer then think seriously about whether you want to take it the fourth tip is previous experience or a foot in the door when you are applying for a phd the chances are there's going to be loads of other candidates applying for the same PhD position that you are. So you need some way of being able to separate yourself from them. A really good way of doing that is to say that you've already got research experience. Think about it from a supervisor's point of view. They've got three years of funding. They're going to put you into the laboratory. They need to know that you're able to do research, that you can work safely in a laboratory. You, can, you care. You actually want to do research. One way of de-risking that, therefore, is to be able to go to that supervisor and say, look, I've already done some research projects and this was my experience. Which leads to the question, how are you going to get that experience? If you've done an undergraduate degree in the UK or the US, the chances are it had a research project component. At the School of Pharmacy, where I work, 
students doing M Farm do a 12 week research project in year four, for instance. So you can take that experience to your interview and you can say, look, I did this 12 weeks project. Here's the report that I wrote up and I really liked it. And that will help. What happens if you're at a university that doesn't offer a research project? That's a bit more tricky, isn't it? You need to get yourself some research experience and how are you gonna do that? You're gonna do it by talking to people and convincing them to let you work in their laboratory over the summer. Many universities offer a summer scholarship scheme for students to work for say eight or 10 weeks in a laboratory with a supervisor during main term times. We do, and I'm sure that lots of other universities do as well. So look on their website and see if you can apply for that sort of scheme. It gives you just a little bit of experience that you can then use in an interview to separate yourself from other candidates. Now you might say to me, well hang on a minute Simon, can you give us an example of someone that went to university not intending to do a PhD, but ended up staying doing a PhD because of a summer placement? And I would say to you, actually I can think of someone and that someone is, oh me, it's me. I went to university to do chemistry because I kind of liked uh, chemistry, but I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I was just bumbling through the degree and I thought, I know, I will work out what I'm going to do with this degree when I'm at the end. When I was in my second year, someone came to me and they said, oh, this particular professor wants to talk to you, Simon. And I thought it was going to be a ritual telling off for having not worked hard enough. But no, when I got to his office, he said, I've seen you in the undergraduate practicals. You seem kind of handy in the laboratory. Do you want to come and do a summer project in my laboratory? So I did. I spent 12 weeks over the summer in his laboratory and it completely changed my view of what a university is. If you've only been to university as an undergraduate student, you don't necessarily realise how much research goes on in the university sector. So it really opened my eyes to research and as a consequence of that, I stayed in that research group. I did a master's degree, which I'm going to come to in a minute, and then I did my PhD and I liked it so much I then went to a postdoc and then I got appointed as a lecturer. So, I'm a great example of how your life can get turned around by doing a summer research placement. So don't rule it out, get as much experience as you can. And the final tip is, do you need an MSc or an MRes in order to do a PhD? Now, I realise that's actually a question, not a tip, but bear with me and we'll see where we go. If you did an undergraduate degree in the UK and you graduated with a first or an upper second, you are eligible to do a PhD. You don't need to do an MRes or an MSc first. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't consider it. As I said already, it's a risk on the part of the PhD supervisor to take you onto a three-year programme when they don't know whether you're going to be any good in the laboratory or not. If for any reason you don't get on with the PhD and you quit, it's very difficult for the supervisor to get a new student in place because they usually can't go back to the funder and get extra funding to get a new person in. So really, they are committing to you for three years and you've got to demonstrate to them that you've got the skills to do the PhD for those three years. Therefore, an MSc or an MRes is a really good option. In the UK, both programmes are one year. I realise that in other countries, in particular India and the US, master's degrees are longer than that. But in the UK, they're just one year. So therefore, a relatively small investment of time and money gets you a lot. It gets you a year's worth of experience in your university. You get to meet supervisors, they get to meet you. You get to demonstrate in a laboratory how good you are in a laboratory you get to experience research, you can convince yourself you're good at it, and most importantly, you're gonna convince the supervisor that you're good at it. We run an MSc program here, it's called MSc in Pharmaceutics. I used to run it, but someone else runs it now. It's very successful. We take on around about 110 to 120 students per year. And of those, a large number go on to do PhDs. And the reason we take them to do PhDs is because we've seen them in the laboratory. 
we know how good their research skills are. So this thing about doing an MSc or an MRes, it's not delaying your PhD by a year, it's actually increasing your chances of getting a PhD because you get to meet people and demonstrate your research skills to them and that de-risks your appointment as a PhD candidate. So, I hope with those five tips you found something useful and you're inspired to apply for a PhD position. Doing a PhD was the best thing I ever did and I am 100% certain it'll be the best thing you ever do too. So take my tips, think about them, apply. If you get an offer, write to me and say, you know what Simon, I used some of your tips and now I'm doing a PhD because that would be fantastic to know that I've helped you in some way to get your dream underway. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you liked the video. I'm going to put up some more videos actually about our MSc programs and why you might want to go to university, why you might want to come to UCL. If there's anything that you feel you'd like me to talk about in terms of career progression or being a student, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much and I'll see you again soon.